Hi, I'm Mary Esther Malloy of Mindful Birth New York, and I am very excited to have a conversation today with the wonderful Julie Arvin, founder and designer of Nesting Days, and she refers to herself as well as the chief mother officer, I am told. And I first met Julie years ago when she called me up. Uh, she had read an article of mine about skin to skin and told me about this beautiful skin to skin baby carrier that she has made. And my first thought was decades of research supporting this. And finally, finally, the technologies are arriving to support this, to support new parents, to have those babies in close and be comfortable. Um, so I am just very excited to um, have this conversation. So um, welcome, Julie. You are in your studio in San Francisco. Is that right? That's correct. That's right. That's right. So welcome. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this. I have appreciated your support for many years now. And um, we finally have the technology here to speak to one another and to a wider audience, which is very exciting. Yeah, I'm telling you, through the years in my childbirth classes, my doula clients, people have loved this carrier so much. Um, and in fact, maybe just for fun, you know, I will show this to people in my classes, um, but maybe you could just show me sure. how you like would guide people to, um, to, to actually wear this. So yeah. let's just see how this will go. Um, but you know, I just saw as you put it up to your chest, there's that white label on the center back. Can you, can you show that a little bit? There it is. That's it. So that's called the inner waist. And um, you wear this as a piece of wearing apparel, skin to skin. Mary Esther has on her tank top and you're welcome to wear a tank top too but as much of your chest uh, as exposed as possible is wonderful. So there it is, and she's gonna step in. And the reason I made sure that you stepped in is I'm also a postpartum doula and know a lot about how those breasts are reacting in those first days and weeks and even months postpartum. So I didn't want anything being pulled over your breasts. So she's gonna step in, there's no crotch, It's you know, just like a tunic and pulling it up to underneath her brow line. And that is a light, really gentle stretch fabric um, that is also compression that feels really good when you're feeling like your whole middle section is jelly after. <laughs> so it's providing the support. It also helps with water retention and edema and swelling and um, feels really good. So now she's going to lift the left shoulder, which is one of the wings. I call these wings. And yes, I invented it and I patented it. So she's going to put that up. And this is sort of like a sling. It goes all the way around 360 degrees around the back as well. And she's going to find the shoulder loop and pull it forward. Find the shoulder loop first. Now we're going to get a baby. There she goes over that burp shoulder, nice and high. And then she's going to use one hand to kind of, yep, there you go, pop that baby in. And this is a newborn size. So all the legs are gonna just stay inside there right now. And then she's gonna pull up the other shoulder. Baby's already supported, not gonna fall out. And there you go, that's the right wing. Yep, there's that shoulder loop. And we're gonna talk about those in just a minute and what they're there for. Now reach around with your hand to find the wing in the back and pull it out nice and firmly. And now you're gonna take the other end that's in the front and pull it under across baby's back and bum and a nice little knot. We're gonna unknot it in a minute too though to show how the baby, if it becomes untied, the baby cannot fall out. This front wing goes around probably about, there's only about an eight inch opening. So it, this snugness is adaptable now as your baby changes shape and size as well. So that is as easy as it is to get the carrier on. Bigger baby, same motions. There you go. And notice she's got both uh, wings up right now, which is fine. You'll get used to it too. I kind of do this simple, yeah, I do this 
sort of step by step. It's in the instruction manual and there's diagrams and stuff, but it's really so easy. Once you get used to it, it's just easy as pie. So there we go. Let's tie it first and then arrange these little legs. Yep, there you got it. And you can wear this all day long. <laughs> Baby will love it. So reach in through the leg openings. You know, it's kind of hard to see it in black on film here. There you go. And this side. There you go again. Cute. So legs are held in that healthy hip M position that's recommended by the Hip Dysplasia Institute. And you can check baby's diapers and all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're going to do another option that you can do, which is let's say you're outside. I love to see baby's feet, but baby's feet feel cold either in the house or anything else. So pull that skirt up over, fold it up, and pull it up over baby's back and over your lumbar. Extra support. There you <laughs> I like it down for new moms when they aren't really very active because it really feels good over their abdomen, especially even C-sections. It's soft enough. But that extra support, a lot of moms just love it. And um, when you're out on a walk, you might want to just pull it up and it you can turn around. So it, it, it has full coverage. So you don't have to wear anything underneath it at all when you're at home or even when you're out. And so you're, let's say you're going on an errand. You need to run to the drugstore to pick up something. Uh, you have it on. You have baby in your carrier if you want to. If, you, if, if it's here in San Francisco and you've got a long trip to the parking lot, baby's already in the carrier. You put baby in the car seat, get behind the wheel, drive, get out, take baby out of the car seat, put, standing there, put baby in. Got a sweater or jacket. You can learn to do this in the car as well so that it's warm in the car. You know, I'm in San Francisco, so we have, we have some videos of this. Um, and then you don't need to grab the stroller. You know? <laughs> and during COVID, this is social distancing very naturally. So, yeah, this is, this is you and baby are in a bubble. <laughs> um, one last question because yeah. my own experience with baby wearing was if I could figure out how to nurse in a carrier mm -hmm. get so much more mileage out of it um, how do you recommend people nurse okay. in this so way? I'm going to show you two ways right now the easiest is put your hands into the leg openings now pull down put baby to breast that easily would you need to come off the shoulder or not necessarily? It depends on your breast size and your anatomy. Um, now, when, when I have new moms, I have them seated because they, aren't, they just aren't that confident yet. Okay, so that's, that's the straddle one. Let's do another one. Ready? Okay, uh, untie, loosen that. And again, baby isn't gonna fall out. Reach in through one leg hole Push, but push the bum up, and then bring both legs over to that leg hole. So you're kind of pushing baby's bum up so you have more leverage. There you go. Both legs come out one side, and we're at the breast. Sweet. Hands-free yep. breastfeeding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited that you could show that because I have a hard time walking people through it, and I have a hard time asking moms to demonstrate that for videos because of the modesty issues that we come up with. So um, that was a good demo. Thank you, Mary Esther. Uh, Julie, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, um, just a little bit about the background of designing this and, uh, and maybe some of your passion around this work and the support you offer families with this. Thank you. I love that you called it technology because it, it, it feels, so important that, you know, um, I've sewn all my life. In fact, over on the table here is the sewing machine my mother taught me on from the 1950s, and I still rely on it because it's my workhorse. Um, and I've loved sewing my whole life. Uh, when I grew up and became a preschool teacher and a mother of two and um, 
a part of my community and PTA and all the things that I was involved in as a parent. Um, it's just been such a consistent theme in my life. And then as a retiree from Gymboree, I was in the apparel business there and was a VP of merchandising. Uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And the story is I literally went to a, a sustainable gardening class here in San Francisco and thought, oh, I could garden all my life. That'd be fun. And um, a doula came up and she was with another mom that she was helping and she was doing some baby wearing and we struck up a conversation and I said, I think I want to become a postpartum doula. And that's my retirement supposedly. And I'm right near San Francisco General. So I got a lot of experience volunteering at San Francisco General in the NICU and with moms in the hospital. And then I had private practice. And as I would go out to these homes in my neighborhood and help moms um, as they came home from the hospital and or from their home birth and was a part of their recovery, they'd say, what baby carrier can I use? This baby does not want to be put down. And we'd get them all out and we'd try them all. And none of them were great for a one day old or a three day old or even a week old. So um, I got it in my head that I could create a better baby carrier. And, and <laughs> so taking the background in apparel design and children's clothing and my passion for motherhood and babies, it all came out as nesting days. And I had no plan for it. <laughs> it just felt like a calling and a passion. And uh, as soon as my patent was published, the Gates Foundation called me and sent me to Rwanda to the Kangaroo Mother Care Conference, hoping that by providing the technology, a baby wearing instrument that could actually work and give moms the freedom also to move, especially in third world countries where we don't have the NICU and all of the things that provide the warmth and the nourishment and the love a newborn needs uh, in a NICU that is provided by other kinds of technology, they understood and wanted to promote the idea that, oh my goodness, mom is an amazing incubator. Her warmth is what really the baby needs. The bo her body, the sway of her body, the smell of her, her mammary glands, her, her uh, her amazing love, her touch. And that's what Skin to Skin is all about. It's these six senses that we're connecting with our babies through. So that gave me the confidence to start a business. And here I am. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a wonderful business, by the way, because it is, it feels like I, I'm making a difference in the world. And we all want a little bit of that. Um, so thank you actually an extraordinary way to support your child's development. Um, in 2017, 2018, we had um, some really fascinating research come out about the formation of the prefrontal cortex. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, not so long ago, we thought, you know, that what happened after birth was just the pruning of so many neurons. And you know those first three years um, are so important to the development of a human because experiences shape what is fired and wired and what is lost, right? So those first three years are absolutely so critical in shaping the health of that brain. But what we're learning now is that over the first three months of a baby's life on the outside, the neurons are actually migrating and we are forming the prefrontal cortex and we want that baby to have a very low stress experience of life on the outside so that we have this optimal brain development happening. And what is a low stress situation for a baby? A low stress situation is, is when a baby knows it's safe, right? So babies are born with this um, sort of meter, like, am I safe, not safe, safe, not safe. And just fascinating research is, is showing us that with our long evolved biology where connection would have been survival for these babies, that every aspect of their physiology is supported when they are in close with the mother. And so when they, a baby is with a mother, 
They're smelling the scent of amniotic fluid secreted from the Montgomery glands on the areola. And that that is telling the baby's brain, I am safe. And with the baby able to know it is safe deeply, the baby can be in a state of rest and digest and growth. Right. And not in a state of fight, flight, or freeze, am I safe? So when we do separate young babies from their mothers, we are learning, even if they look peacefully asleep over there, that there can be this autonomic level of like, am I, am I okay? And we see it, respiration is not the same. Yes. Um, uh, cortisol levels are different. Um, uh, even sleep cycling, right? So when a baby is in close, we have regular sleep cycles. And when a baby is separate, it's not the same. And so I love this carrier because <laughs> it just supports that closeness and it makes it easy. I mean, for me, this is the most truly hands-free carrier. Um, and I love that as well, because as a new mom, like you do want to eat, you do want to, you know, carry on. And it, it's, I feel like with this carrier, it sort of moves the pregnancy bump from here up right. to here. <laughs> right. The intention was that it would be a second womb for the, for the fourth trimester. And uh, all the things that you're saying are so supported by the science that you are referring to and that I was introduced to in 2013 as a, well, 2010 as a doula. And then in 2014, just expanded on that when I uh, was in Rwanda and have followed that science ever since. And I like to say that it's really the science and the soul of skin to skin that I'm interested in because the science, I love to hear you talk and I love to read about it, but running a business, I don't get as much time to do that. And I'm spending a lot of time making baby carriers and yeah, you know, the things that are involved in that. Um, but you know, we know about oxytocin now we know how it erases birth trauma and or helps at least mitigate whatever trauma baby and mother are going through that this PTSD that can actually occur in many cases I had a traumatic first birth and we were separated because of the timing in in history and I moved to San Francisco and seven years later had my second child and Nancy Bardicke was part of my delivery team and they didn't let him go. It's like, she's, you're not taking this baby. She knows what she wants. She's got her birth plan there. And um, then I had a doula long before anyone else was talking about doulas. And um, the difference it meant to me is really probably the, the soul of why I, I do this. It gets registered in us. And I, you know, seven decades into my life now, we all tell our birth stories every day. We, I'll be 90 and you'll still have to listen to my birth stories and this passion as many, many of us always will. Birth changes us it, and being parents, I mean, adoption changes us. This caring for this new life is amazing. And you asked me yesterday when we were speaking as sort of as we're winding this up, what my wish is for the parents that, are out there listening. And it's really that they fall in love. Uh, a doctor in Rwanda said after three days, and he was very frustrated, he was uh, from Johns Hopkins. And uh, he said, you know, we've gone, we've heard lectures and this and that and research, but newborns really only need three things. They need warmth and that's your warmth. That's important they need nourishment and it's almost constant and what we know is when your baby is connected with you your prolactin is pumping all the time the oxytocin and serotonin is helping it milk supply improves breastfeeding success is improved and you with your demonstration mary as you can see you know 18 hours a day is normal to be at the breast right out of 24 in those first weeks and mothers will say that's all he wants he just wants the boob all the time it's like yeah i know and so does this doctor and he said and then they need love and love is the most important that's your touch that's that's knowing that safe place and then he said and that baby carrier does all three so keeping it simple 
knowing, you know, when you don't know what to do, figure out what love would, is telling you. It's, it's not saying you're going to spoil him by picking him up because that's not true. Love is telling you my baby is t communicating with me. It's the first conversation they have and they know exactly what they need to teach you is I need you now. I won't need you as much six months from now or a year from now. So my wish is that those first three months that shape the nest are really those profound ones that I still remember. I can still smell them. I can still have my arms ache to hold them, right? Uh, and they're men. They're grown up. <laughs> but that's still in me. Thanks. That's great. Um, Julie, real quick before we close, I see some pretty things behind you. Oh, um, right. Would you yes. mind showing us real quick what you've got in the studio there? So you have the black, and it's still the preponderance of orders, and I love it. Um, and in making colors is much harder because of some restrictions of, on how much thousands of yards of fabric I can buy. But we've just produced this one, which is marine blue and we kind of like it. And then we have a, a gray over on this side and um, they're both really soft and sort of pre-washed. And then I think you can see the men's. It's in gray and black. I just did a redesign on it and I have oh, a couple hundred coming in next week. We've been taking pre-orders on them because COVID has made some challenges um, in production. We are our polka dot, which is one of our staples, um, the fact the printer that prints our polka dots had a had an outbreak, so he has to close. So I I'm very transparent on so, online. It's like they aren't coming for I'm not sure how long, but order something else. So we try and give you some choices, and then the stripes. Um, I've done accessories in the past. Um, I I don't love calling them breastfeeding cover ups because I think women should be out of their breastfeeding, but for modesty, I understand. So those are gonna be um, my latest design, which would be a, a one-shouldered um, breastfeeding cover-up, and they're gonna be really strong, soft, and you can knot it on one side so that you still are visually um, connected to your baby and also a bit fashionable. And um, last, I, I did, I'll, I'll get this out. This will just be for Christmas, and it's so simple. I decided to make some jammy bottoms, really lightweight things to wear around the house. And uh, it's just in these two colors. And then this little cover up that's really sweet too. And there will be a baby outfit for Christmas too. <laughs> so that's, that's um, what, that's what I do in San Francisco. And I, I thank you so much for. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Thanks for um, sharing your goods and what's going on inside that heart of yours. Um, thank you for the work you do. And um, we'll be in touch soon. Great. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.